investigate his claims, examine the evidence, make your decision. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, They've taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said, Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. We know that the tomb was empty, but where was Jesus? Could it be true that Jesus is alive? Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied. And I don't know where they've put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said. If you've taken him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out. Rabboni which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go, find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. The testimony of a Jewish woman in first century Palestine had no value whatsoever. The fact that John, the Gospel writer, records a woman finding the empty tomb first points to the honesty of his account and the accuracy of this event. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, 
Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Could it be possible that the disciples muscled their way past an armed guard, rolled the large stone away and then stole in the body of Jesus? Of course not. John's account tells us that the disciples were meeting behind locked doors, trembling for their lives for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus, their leader, had been crucified as a criminal and they thought that they were next in line. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him you will have life by the power of his name. All of the disciples went on to proclaim the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Many laid down their lives for this message. Now someone might die for something that they thought was true, something that was passed down to them which they firmly believed. But if you yourself made up a story, you would not be willing to die for it. It wouldn't be worth it. The boldness of the disciples of Jesus and the many appearances Jesus made to his followers prove to us that Jesus really did rise from the dead. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid for our sins. God shows his acceptance of his sacrifice by raising Jesus from the dead. Because he rose again, we don't need to fear death anymore. His resurrection proves that there is life beyond the grave and we can trust the promises of Jesus. He is preparing a place for all those who simply believe.